new X-Plane is the X65. It looks fantastic, especially in this color. But it's not just paint, there's technical stuff too. The latest American aircraft has the maneuverability of a flight and does so without a pilot. There are advantages to hovering above the ground and landing on inhospitable surfaces, but those aren't the main ones. The X-65 looks like a regular bird on the radar. Meanwhile, the new X-Plane has a wingspan of over 26 feet. Both the Swedish Gripen and the French Dassault Rafale have similar technical parameters. The X-65's cargo bay can hold a light truck or one and a half pallets of guided bombs. That's not a small drone, but when it takes to the skies, the radar operator sees an object the size of a wild goose. Something that looks like a wild goose and flies like a wild goose is probably a wild goose. This is how an air defense officer thinks when he sees one small dot out of hundreds of them. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency has spent much money creating that illusion for 30 years. Let's get into the details. The American X-Plane has a few things in common. The Bell X-1 was the first aircraft to break the sound barrier. X-35, the prototype that became the F-35, the X-57 electric plane has a folding propeller. The X-59 Quest supersonic aircraft is slim and quiet. Almost all aircraft in the world have movable wing parts. Each movable plane reduces the stealth of an airplane, but without these devices, it's impossible to fly and maneuver. It is necessary to use flaps and slats to take off and land. Ailerons control, roll, and pitch while slats turn the plane. Each works the same way. A protruding plane increases the density of oncoming air. It is as a result of this that the flight direction changes. As its main feature, the X-65 does not have movable planes. In the aircraft body, dozens of tiny holes supply air to the oncoming flow under high pressure. Thus, the density of the airflow increases. The U.S. Air Force Academy in Colorado conducted 14,000 wind tunnel experiments to confirm the effectiveness of such a scheme. To position the nozzle in the right places, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency funded the creation of an 11-inch X-plane model. The first internal combustion engine aircraft was created in 2015. Then, Aurora Flight Sciences tested a 25% scale model of its aircraft in San Diego, California for four weeks. The test was successful. It's now time for the full-size prototype stage. This stage is called Control of Revolutionary Aircraft with Novel Effector, Crane. The new airflow control technology is called Active Flow Control. Feeding jet engine exhaust through nozzles against the oncoming flow is the first version of a monolithic wing system. Air nozzles enable aircraft to fly. Operational costs are less than 1% of engine power output. In the second version of Active Flow Control, Electrodes are used instead of air nozzles. The air is heated instantly by an electric discharge. The higher the temperature, the lower the air density. The aircraft's roll, pitch, and heading will change as the flow density changes. X-65 aircraft have fewer parts that require complex repair due to active flow control's low complexity. This offsets the cost of the technology. In the same way, it was hidden from the radars of the Lockheed F-117 Nighthawk by the sharp edges of the airframe of the X-65, active flow control does not cancel out already known methods for reducing visibility. The sharp edges of the X-65 airframe scatter electromagnetic waves emanating from enemy radars. The F-117 is still a fighter with many secrets. It has been retired due to introduction of the F-22 Raptor, but most of its 59 production models remain on hand. The special coating on the underside of the X-65 hull similarly absorbs ground station signals to that on the Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit Bomber, which cost more than $44 billion to build. There is no doubt that the billions of dollars spent on the B-2 were well spent when several of them made a non-stop flight from Whiteman Air Force Base, Missouri to Kosovo in Europe and back wholly undetected. But the X-65 is stealthier than any known stealth aircraft. It's obviously a great aircraft, but what will it be used for? It was built for U.S. missions, special operations forces, 
which is unusual. It has been observed in Libya, Iraq, and Afghanistan that special forces conduct secret operations on enemy territory before fighters and bombers take to the skies. Cannon fire sounds and ground forces enter the fray. In special operations aviation, most of the fleet comprises helicopters and aircraft for auxiliary purposes. As part of the command's unusual equipment, the Boeing B-22 Osprey convertiplane stands out, which can be used to land and fire on ground units. Special operations aviation is otherwise workhorses. In the field, Boeing CH-47 Chinook helicopters are used to land troops and evacuate units from the battlefield. They can land in the most remote and inaccessible places without a runway, and they provide excellent service. Usually, long-range missions are done with the MS-130N Combat Talon II transport and landing aircraft, which use parachutes when landing, but such large-scale operations are rare. Fire support is provided by UH-60 Blackhawk helicopters, which circle over the battlefield and shoot air-to-ground missiles and machine guns at enemy personnel and equipment. Since the Vietnam War, U.S. Special Operations Forces have used the Hughes OH-6 KUs for reconnaissance, evacuation, and other support functions. The Flying Egg with fighter planes on board has become a symbol of special operations. Special Operations Forces rely heavily on light aircraft like the C-145A Skytruck, C-146A Wolfhound, and U-28A. Even though they are supposed to be out of camera range, Compact turboprops often fall into their lenses. American Special Forces value them for their unpretentious and undemanding quality of runways. On the one hand, the latest X-65 is too technologically advanced to serve as a workhorse. On the other hand, this aircraft can perform the most critical combat missions in special operations. The X-65 can perform the mission of the first crushing strike, which occurs even before landing. This would alter the concept of special operations for the better. With its 30-foot cargo bay, the X-65 fits seamlessly into Rapid Dragon's concept. Rapid Dragon is an air-to-ground cruise missile container that is dropped by a parachute from an aircraft. The X-65 penetrates enemy airspace first, then drops a cruise missile. Upon leaving the aircraft, the container transforms into a missile launch module. High-precision missiles are launched from a remote control center at the operator's command and then fired at targets. A launch air platform is not stationary, so enemy return fire cannot destroy it. It is therefore much more likely that a mission will succeed. One container holds up to nine JSSM-ER cruise missiles. These are air launch cruise missiles that are incredibly accurate. The warhead weighs about 990 pounds they penetrate reinforced concrete structures and can attack moving targets if necessary. The landings can begin after a devastating missile attack. Special operations forces are less likely to lose life during the landings. Once a bridgehead has been captured, more troops are landed and ground forces are gradually deployed. Everything goes as expected. Our previous video on the Rapid Dragon system can be found on our channel. Flying command posts is another way to use the X-65 in U.S. Special Operations missions. A specially equipped MC-130N Combat Talon II aircraft or MC-130J Commando II aircraft is now used for command functions. It is common for a plane with a command on board to circle in an ellipsoidal trajectory near the battlefield. Several fighters cover it. All aircraft are refueled directly in the air. Obviously, enemy fighters and air defense systems cannot ignore such a large concentration of aircraft in a limited area. In this case, the officers of the flying headquarters are in great danger. A dead operational headquarters means that the operation is failed. However, if the X-65 is used as the command post, most problems can be avoided. Its maximum altitude is 30,000 feet and its speed is not exceeding the speed of sound, so it is pretty comfortable for unprepared passengers. In economy mode, the new X-plane can circle at a low altitude without a fighter escort and refuel in the air regularly. In the coming years, we will see the X-65 in action and we will see active flow control technology used on other projects as well. This technology will revolutionize the aircraft industry. In addition to X-plane programs that have received little publicity so far, DARPA is working on a flying naval ship and an underwater aircraft carrier. 
subscribe to our channel to be the first to hear about new releases.